Hi everyone, good evening. We'll do a quick audio video check. If one of you can say that you're able to see me and are able to hear me properly in the chat box, and I know that like the session is live and it's going smoothly, we can get started with this edition of the Q&A after that, right? Just see if you're able to see me and you're able to hear me and we can give me a go ahead in the chat box and be wonderful. Hey, thanks, Dheeraj. Thanks, Dheeraj. Uh, we'll start taking questions in about five minutes. Before that, what I'll do is, yeah, to start with, welcome to this edition of Vizaco's GMAT Live Q&A session. What we're going to do is I'll quickly give you a overview of what's happening in this focus edition. What are the things that are changing? So it's like we're all on the same page as to what is happening in the GMAT focus edition. And then I'll take questions one at a time and keep answering them, right? Let's get started. GMAT is introducing what is known as a GMAT focus edition. Right. This edition, these are the key features of this edition. To start with, we used to have four sections in the GMAT uh, earlier edition, which is basically quant, verbal, integrated reasoning, and there was an essay section called AWA. Now, they basically removed one of the sections and brought it down to three sections. Each section is for a duration of 45 minutes. The earlier examination, essentially the quant section was 62 minutes, about an hour. The verbal section was 65 minutes, a little more than an hour. So give two hours and 10 minutes approximately. And then you had one hour of IR plus AW, half an hour each. So it was a three hours, 10 minutes, three hours, seven minutes kind of an examination. It's right now becoming essentially a 135 minute examination, which is two hours, 15 minutes. So approximately an hour of the examination has been shaved off. So it becomes a shorter examination, both in terms of number of questions and in terms of the duration of the examination. The old version, the present version, it's got 36 questions in the verbal section, 31 questions in the quant section. That makes it as 67 plus 12, which essentially makes it as uh, for D, uh, IR and then you have AWE. So talking about 78, 80 questions present in the present format, which is going to be down to 64 questions. 20 in what they call as a data insight section, 21 in the quant section, and 23 in the verbal section. So number of questions goes down, the time duration also goes down. So it's becoming a shorter examination to that extent. IR, which used to be a standalone score on a scale of one to eight, is coming into the main score and it's going to be an integral part of it, right? So this is one part, other changes. This is something which is going to be, uh, many of you might find this information useful and would want to act on it meaningfully. First and foremost, if you had been struggling with sentence correction in the verbal section, sentence correction is completely removed from the focus edition. So if you had had difficulty with this particular thing, you should probably wait for the GMAT focus edition. Second thing, AWA, the essay section is completely removed. No more essays. Every single question that you're going to be answering is an objective type question. And lastly, when it comes to quant, geometry used to be a pain point for many test takers. Geometry is removed. It's only arithmetic and algebra. So again, if geometry had been a pain point for you in the earlier version, you should wait for the focus edition. So these are the things in terms of what portions are removed from the GMAT focus edition. Look at a few more things. Sectional score used to be 0 to 60, but actual score was between 6 to 51 for the quant and the verbal section. For IR, it used to be 1 to 8, which is what is the present one. And AWA was 0 to 60. This was the marking scale for the different sections. So we had different numbers for each of these different sections. In the new format, in the GMAT focus edition, the quant, verbal, and the data insights section, all three will be scored on a scale of 60 to 90, moving in one point increments. The overall score in the existing version is 200 to 800, and it goes in increments of 10. So your score will be 700, 710, 720, so on and so forth. In the focus edition, to bring about a clarity to the business schools and to the test takers, as to which edition of the GMAT test you have taken. They brought about clarity. They said that the score is going to move from 205 to 805. Still, it's going to move only in intervals of 10. So score is going to be a 705. There is no 710. 705, 715, 725, so on and so forth. So if someone looks at the score, they'll immediately be able to say, hey, this person has taken the old edition. This person has taken the focus edition. Just to bring about that clarity, they're basically doing this. Right? Equal weightage for all three sections. So there's going to be one third weightage for the quant, one third weightage for the verbal, and one third for the data insights in the final score of this 205 to 805 reporting scale. 
exam will be available from quarter four of financial, uh, not financial year. This is calendar year 2023, which is sometime in October of this year. You can start registering for the focus edition from the 29th of August, 2023. You can start registering, but the test will be available only from sometime in October. The official guide versions, they're going to come up with three reviews for the quant, verbal, and data insights, and you're going to have that big book. All of them, all four kind of books will be available from the 6th of June, 2023. So these are the key highlights. We've done quite a lot of videos about what is happening in the focus edition. You can basically make a note of this URL. It's available on YouTube, wzkwo.in slash GMAT focus videos. So you can go. Everything that is happening in the GMAT focus edition, every time we get an update from GMAC about something has been added, some other additional information has been given, we basically have a video to keep all of you updated about it. So you might probably want to bookmark this and keep it. Right? On that note, let's get started. We'll start with the first of the questions. Very interesting question that Deera just thrown in. Started by saying that, is there any specific advantage if you write the examination with the initial few days when it's available? Will we get a percentile advantage if we happen to be among the first takers of the GMAT focus edition? Certainly no, certainly no. I'll explain it to you. The way GMAT calculates its percentile is not on the people who are writing it just today, yesterday, right? They basically to have a large enough population so that there is meaningful uh, interpretation to the percentile. They typically use the previous three testing year data to compute your percentile score. A test year for GMAT, the way calendar year is from January to December, financial year in India is from April to March. A test year for GMAT is from the 1st of July to the 30th of June. So even for you with the GMAT focus edition, when they're going to be computing percentile, though it's a new variant of the examination and everything, GMAC has already come up with saying that, hey, there is a comparison scale between the old version and the new version, and we're bringing that comparison scale based on one big parameter and one important parameter, and that parameter is the percentile. So if someone had a 96th percentile score in the old edition, that person is in the top four percentile of the test takers in terms of his competence in writing the GMAT. According to the GMAT, if you take the GMAT focus edition or the GMAT original edition, if you are in the top four percentile, if you are the 96 percentile person, on a given day, I administer this test to you, I administer the focus edition test to you, your score should not deviate significantly from that 96 percentile. So essentially they're saying, we're going to make a comparison between the two scores. The convergence point for us is the percentile. So when they're going to report percentile, let's say that for the very first test taker using the GMAT focus edition, that percentile, if it's going to have a comparison, for example, if you say, if I happen to be the first test taker for the GMAT focus edition, then I'm the, my score is the only score that's available, right? In that case, I should be getting 100 percentile. That's not how it's going to be. If I ended up scoring somewhere in like the 535 or something, whatever is a percentile associated with that is what you're going to be getting, right? So by taking the test in the initial few days, your percentile number is not going to be at an advantage because if that had been the case, then there is going to be a lot of deviation and it'll make a lot of sense for someone to, it's like a lottery. You want to be the first guy in the lottery to get it. So no advantage by taking it initially at all. When will Vizaco start its focus edition course? Uh, the pre-recorded version of it, we hope to have it going from the end of August. From mid of August, we'll have our live online classes for the focus edition starting. Uh, the rationale being that we are waiting for the official guide for preparation material to be available. It's available from the first week of June. So we want about a couple of months to basically iron out whatever is new added, what we need to change in our existing curriculum. How do we make it to be in sync with how the GMAT original uh, OG, OG basically mimics the actual test. We want to have something which is very similar and representative to that. So we need about a couple of months to get that product out. But from what we have seen about what is available in the focus edition in terms of syllabus, they're removing things from the existing thing. So you don't need to learn something new. You probably need to learn, do a lot more practice of what is being tested. If in arithmetic and algebra, right now we have about 1600 questions and we have a total of 2,000 questions, of which 400 are geometry. We'll probably replace those 400 geometry questions with 400 more questions from arithmetic and algebra. So your overall number of questions available for you to practice will be the same as it is in the old edition, but it would mimic what are all the topics which are being tested in the focus edition. So we'll have our pro product, which is both quant, verbal, and data insights available by the end of August, and we'll start our live online courses focusing on the focus edition from the second, third week of August. So this is the timeline that we have. Right. Uh, has any topic been removed from quants in the focus edition? Yes, uh, grind for success, whoever it is, right? Essentially, geometry is going to be out. It's only arithmetic and algebra as far as the quant section goes, right? 
Uh, look at a few more questions down the line. Just give me a minute. Yes, I mean, in terms of geometry, everything related to geometry is remote. They're removing geometry, coordinate geometry, surface geometry, surface areas, volumes, mensuration, all of that, all of that is remote. So geometry is like not there. One other thing, as in like, in terms of what Abhinav's question is, this is what GMAC has told in terms of the syllabus that's available for the quant, right? They've said, they're going to be testing arithmetic and elementary algebra, right? Is it going to have shades of coordinate geometry in it? Because coordinate geometry at some level can be thought of as linear equations when it comes to basically the equation component of it, right? Straight lines are linear equations, right? Parabolas are quadratic equation. So to that extent, can there be flavors of coordinate geometry in the existing version? Not sure, which is why we are not coming up with a product till the official guide for the OG for the focus edition is going to be available. From the 6th of June, it will be available. At that point, if you find any representation of coordinate geometry seeping into the algebraic equations component, we will basically have those coverage also. At that point, we'll have 100% clarity on is there going to be any shade of coordinate geometry in this examination or not? Right, right now, from what it appears, geometry is not there. So believing that coordinate geometry also in a significant way is not likely to be there. Right. The portions removed from old, we have covered that SS. Uh, Abhivani, that's a lovely question. Is the new GMAT tougher? Your video said 665 in the new GMAT is the same as 720 in the old GMAT. It is, okay, let's think about it. Tough, easy, we'll look at it in two parts. One in terms of how much is required to prepare and two in terms of where you need to focus to prepare, right? And third, probably another aspect, let's bring it, let's bring in the scoring angle of it, right? In terms of the portion that you'll have to prepare, I would go to the extent of saying, the new version of the GMAT takes away about 40% of what you would typically need to prepare for the GMAT examination. In the existing GMAT examination, you will prepare for sentence correction. Sentence correction has got a lot of grammar rules. You have to work a lot to make sense out of it, right? Subject verb agreement, pronouns, exceptions to those rules is neither nor what would be plural, what would be singular. Modifier, you place a modifier in one place, you miss a modifier in another place. Way too many things, right? So in terms of the preparation for the verbal section as it exists today, Reading comprehension is something that you do continuously. You read passages, you answer them, you build your speed reading, you comprehend better. That's a continuous exercise throughout your entire preparation. What you actually sit and prepare in terms of concepts would be for critical reasoning and for sentence correction. The removing sentence correction, practically they're taking away 50% or more of what you need to prepare for the verbal section. So the quantum of what needs to be prepared for the verbal section, significant component is removed. Let's look at again quant. In quant, if you look at the present distribution of questions, I would say roughly about 40% arithmetic, 40% algebra, and about 20% would be geometry. Geometry at most will go up to 22, 23%. But in terms of the quantum of what you need to prepare, look at arithmetic topics. It'll be percentages, profit loss, ratios sometimes, interest, right? Uh, uh, averages. These kinds of topics are what you have. Do they have concepts? They have concepts. But are they concept intensive components? No, you have to solve different kinds of questions, but you're not going to learn anything significantly new to apply those learnings into the question. But when it comes to geometry, the theory component itself, the quantum of what you need to learn is significantly large. So if they're removing geometry out of this entire thing, what you need to invest in terms of the different things that you'll have to learn, that goes down, right? How many more questions you need to solve in arithmetic and algebra? That is not going to go down. Probably it's going to increase because the weightage of these two components are going to be higher. But removing geometry is like, though it accounts for only 20, 22% of the overall uh, number of questions, I would take a guess saying that about 40% of the concepts that you learn has been practically removed. About half of verbal, 40% of quant is removed. So from the preparation angle of it, how much different things that you have to learn the new version takes away significantly a lot out of it. So first part, we have done. The second part, the focus is now changing, right? When it comes to, the, they've introduced a new section called Data Insights. New in the sense, it picks things from different places and basically makes it into one unit, right? It basically picked data sufficiency from the quant section because the new quant section has only problem solving questions. It's taken the data sufficiency, thrown it into Data Insights. And it's picking IR, which was a basically an outlying score, as in like the score was not a part of the integral 800 score. They're bringing that into data insights. 
earlier what anyone would have typically advised uh, test takers is like hey ir is important but if you're running out of time ensure that you get a 6 on 8 on ir and keep your head above water and focus the extra time that you can invest in that into quant and verbal because when someone talks about gmat score we always talk about how much did you get out of 800 i got a 720 i got a 740 is what people say right they even go to the extent of tom toming saying that i got a q51 i got a v47 that kind of thing happens right so quant and verbal were the key drivers of your gmat score in the older version now ir as a part of di and data sufficiency which is also a part of di is going to be equally as important in driving your overall score which means that people who took or basically did not give as much importance rightly so to the integrated reasoning section and focused a lot on quant and verbal cannot afford to do the same thing and integrated reasoning per se is a little more difficult than quant and verbal because if you look at the integrated reasoning section questions yes there is tables there is graph there is uh, verbal related questions but most of the questions test multiple aspects of your understanding there is definitely a numerical angle to it there is definitely an inference critical reasoning reading comprehension kind of have you understood this question and have you answered it right those angles come into it so in a way it tests people who can do very well in ir should be people who have good competence in both quant and verbal and a little more is needed now that becomes an integrated part of it which means that to that extent your focus when you are taking the focus edition should shift significantly to getting a good score in the ir component you can no longer take a lackadaisical approach to ir preparation ds was always important that will continue to be important because if they continue to have the same 12 questions of ir out of the 20 questions in data insights about 40% of the data insights which is eight questions are going to come from data sufficiency so this di is going to become increasingly more important to get a overall good score right the number 665 and 720 is not what i told it's what gmac has said on their website this is essentially the thing what gmac wanted to bring in is saying that hey we have created a percentile equivalent for each of these score numbers how did they probably go about it this is what they were done they basically taken from 2017 to 2022 all the gmat test takers that number worked out to about 866000 or 900000 people roughly a million people right they basically picked whatever that they have question wise information for all of these test takers because the entire database is available with gmat so they would have said if i convert this test if for example problem solving is now going to be a part of quant ir whatever they answer is going to be a part of data insights verbal i'll remove whatever they scored in sentence correction retain only what they scored in reading comprehension and critical reasoning they would have basically written a program which would have culled out this test each of these test takers scores for what it would have been had these old tests been administered as a gmat focused test and they would have run the algorithm and they would have basically got a score for each of those things that score 665 basically you have 6 percentage of the people scoring that which is 94th percentile that's exactly the number for 720 in the old format so in terms of a scaling it becomes a little difficult so yes you see now what we are going to be saying is 665 is a good score as much as 720 was a good score is what we are going to say we are going to talk a different language right now it's like suddenly saying that if a country changes its currency right yesterday the currency of a country was let's say x uh, someone had their own currency abc and today they're changing their currency to dollar the value system suddenly changes right that's essentially what is going to happen so it's not that the 665 makes this test more difficult you have plugged in a old test data and ported it into a new scoring system and to that extent it's going to look a little different right so keep that perspective in mind so it's not going to become difficult because of the scoring number and the scoring number is also going to change 665 which is probably the 94th percentile if you look at it a year down the line may not be 94th percentile it might be a 90th percentile i'm again wagering a guess here for the simple reason when people know integrated reasoning is an integral part of your score all of us test takers are going to become smarter we are not going to take integrated reasoning with a lackadaisical attitude the time that we are saving from geometry and sentence correction will invest in scoring better in integrated reasoning so the previous five year people who took the test for them integrated reasoning was a data which was external to their overall score for us people who are going to take the gmat focus edition it's going to be an integral component of it so we're going to give that much more importance to it which means we're going to score higher in that section because we're focusing more on it so this range would change it's what you see today is essentially picking their test scores and importing it into 
the new format for GMAT focusation. And GMAT has to do this to bring about a synergy, a convergence point between people who are taking the old test and the new test. Because percentile is finally a number which is uniform. Of so many test takers, I'm the top two percentile. I'm in the top four percentile. That's not going to change, right? That format or this format, they have to bring that convergence, which is why they're given that comparison table. Don't use a comparison table to think that the new format is necessarily tougher. It's not necessarily tougher, not necessarily easier. Easier from the portions component. Tougher basically because things like integrated reasoning are one, generally tough, and you need to suddenly start focusing a lot on it. Right. So one, I'm going to look at the next one. Sir, and what all topics in algebra will GMAT test us on? I don't think they're going to add anything new to what they tested in the old version or the new version. So essentially, you're going to have linear equation, quadratic equation, have inequalities, arithmetic progression. You're going to have probability. Uh, you're going to have uh, anything that relates to equations in algebra is going to be there. So these are all the topics which you will find in algebra. Rates, which is like speed, time, distance, uh, pipe systems, work time. These are all going to be a part of your algebra. So nothing new is going to come into algebra. You're not going to probably be tested on linear uh, things like matrices or something in this. That's not going to happen. Harish, will B schools know which version of the GMAT? Very definitely, very definitely, because the scoring range itself is different, Harish. It used to be 200 to 800 going in multiples of 10 and in increments of 10. This one goes in increments of 10, but it's going to have a final, the unit digit of this is always going to be a 5. So if I see a 725, I know you have taken the new version. If I see a 740, I know you've taken the old version. So that's going to be very evident, right? I mean, officer, grammar is my weak area. It haunts me <laughs> if you have estimated and I'm going to take you at face value, I mean, if grammar is your weak area, just wait till the focus edition comes. You're essentially getting your biggest, your Achilles heel out of the way in this. So probably will make sense to wait for the focus edition if grammar is your weak area. Hey, Garo, uh, I'm good. How are you? Uh, Manikandan, I have a low AWA score. Will B schools ignore this as GMAT focus doesn't have AWA or will it be a red flag? Uh, I don't know what that low score is. Probably a four is low enough because it's the 18th percentile in the GMAT. If you have that kind of a score, apply, apply. Uh, at some level, the business, see, GMAT is a foundation which on its board of governors and I, I think the governing council itself has a lot of top business school representatives in it, which means that this decision to come up with a focus edition, remove AWA from it would not have happened without their knowledge. Obviously, it is a co collaborative effort and like a coordinate and thing that would have done. So at some level, schools have said, hey, we're not going to worry too much about AWA. So I think you should give it a shot. You should give it a shot. If your other scores are good, if you have, let's say, a 710, 720 in the GMAT, with a 6 plus in the IR, and this is the only one which is a red flag, don't worry. Just go ahead and apply with it. Could possibly justify saying that why it didn't go well your way or something, or like uh, you had problem with your fingers typing or find something which is not as bad as the excuse that I'm trying to give you right now. Find something to say why it did not go well. Should possibly not should, uh, given uh, the way you uh, worded it, given the fact that GMAT focus edition is not having AWA, they should not probably hold this against you. Will the new GMAT exam be available as an online examination? Yes, yes, the old edition, as much as it was available as a center-based and an online version, GMAT is continuing with the online version for this one also. So if you live in a place where access to a center is difficult or you have to travel a long way to come to that place, look at the online version of the examination. Brunalini, if we join Visaco in June, will we get access to uh, new questions at the place of geometry or sentence correction? Uh, yes, if you join Visaco in the month of June for the pro edition, uh, our pro version is valid for a duration of four months. So June, July, August. When we come up with a new edition, it's going to be basically August 10. So if you're focusing on the focus edition, Toward the end of it, the last one month of your access, you'll definitely have access to all of these. We, we'll, uh, you'll have access to a new version of it for about a month. So if you join a little later, you're going to have it for a longer duration. You will have access to the new questions. How will business schools come to know which version of the GMAT since there'll be a score difference between the both edition? Yes, yes, so uh, Saha. It, it, all these new focus edition scores are going to end with a five. The older edition score, scores always ended with a zero. The unit digit makes a difference. Itachi, uh, will business schools differ between the two examinations? 
they should not differ between the two examinations for the simple reason uh, they will at some level there will be a convergence point for them in terms of the percentile so they'll know that hey this gentleman has got a 665 in one and this lady has got a 720 in the other examination these two percentile wise are the same so therefore these two students in terms of what the gmat tests about them have the same competence as what it is going to be. So they're going to look at the percentile, not just the absolute number. They have the percentile rank obviously with them. And to that extent, it's not going to make a difference at all. And at some level, business schools, because GMAC keeps running the survey with business schools periodically and makes adjustments to its test so that the test stays relevant. See, at the end of the day, you have to realize that the business schools during the COVID year said, we're not going to look at the test. Survey. We're going to not look at GMAT or GRE. GMAT has to stay relevant. GRE has to stay relevant for business schools to use those as metrics to admit students. If these tests are basically uh, anachronistic, they are they basically out of their time. If they are not going to measure what the business schools think are relevant to measure, to uh, judge whether to give an admission to a student on academic grounds, because GMAT and GRE basically say that they are indicators of how well you are likely to perform in the first year of your study at the business school. So schools will keep giving them feedback. At some level, they've told them that, hey, you basically uh, go with this newer version. So schools know the older edition existed till this point. This is a modified version. The older edition tested some things which are not tested in the newer ones. So to that extent, the older edition is not at a disadvantage. The newer edition is what they think is now relevant. So they're not going to make much of a difference. They're going to worry only about the percentile scores. So I'm from a business family. This is Abhinav's question. I'm really looking forward to the GMAT, but bad ACADs in 10th and 12th, will it be a hurdle? I got decent score in graduation of seven years work. Right. Uh, 10th and 12th, to the large extent, especially if you're applying outside India, you have seven years of experience. You have a possibility of applying to the PGPX programs, which is the EMBA programs at the IAMs, Amtabad, Bangalore, Calcutta, Lucknow. Uh, I think Indore offers it and a bunch of other newer IAMs also offer it. XLRI has a program which is called PGDGM. All of these are one year MBA. ISB obviously is there. For a fact, I know that Ahmedabad places a lot of emphasis on previous academics. And they look at overall academic rental starting from your high school, which is 10th standard. So you might probably be at a disadvantage with I am Ahmedabad's PGPX programs. The other places, it should not be such a big deal, especially if your graduation is good, seven years of experience, and you can basically substantiate saying that now I'm academically good with a good GMAT score. That should basically help your cause. If you're applying outside India, it should not really matter if you can... Essentially, many of these schools will have an optional essay. If you can kind of give a narrative which is good to justify why your scores in 10th and 12th were not good and how that basically shaped you as an individual to where you are today, right? Everyone is looking for transformation, right? It's not that if you did so well from 10th, 12th and con continued with the uh, all good story all the way, they're wonderful. They're happy to have such a student. As much as business schools want to know, someone Basically, everyone loves this uh, racks to riches story. Racks to riches need not necessarily be monetarily. It could also be in terms of how well you realized what did not go well for you in your high school or higher secondary school and how you made amendments to it, how you corrected, you fought that way through to get to a good graduation and how you did well during the seven years of business and how those were good learning lessons for you to basically navigate through tough times or like hurdles, right? So those are things people like to listen. They want to know how you navigate it through it. And if that narrative is good, this, this is definitely going to be uh, a, a thing which is going to work in your favor rather than against you. Just a minute, guys. I have to move here and there to read it. So do we miss the advantage of R1 deadline if we take the... Certainly, yes. Certainly, yes. The uh, GMAT focus edition is going to be available only from quarter four, which is like earliest is October of 2023. By October 2023, most R1 deadlines will be done. So if you're focusing on R1 deadlines, I would recommend that you take the older format of the GMAT. Chandra, can you say when the OG will be available? GMAT has said that it's going to be available from the 6th of June, which is about 15, 20 days from now. You'll be having access to it. Uh, it should be available in all places, uh, including Amazon.in is what they've said. All uh, you can... You, both the e-book format and the physical book format will be available for you from June 6th, 2023. Diraj, 
supposed to go up with time as people will be preparing IR mostly. Absolutely, Niraj, absolutely, right? Uh, the 665-720, that differential that we're seeing, which is a significant difference. Right? When I saw that uh, blog post on GMAX website, mba.com, I was also for a moment like, the first thing that hits you is like, this has suddenly become so difficult. To Only top 4% of the people manage the 665 is the first impression that I got. But as you rightly pointed out, as people prepare for IR more seriously and their IR numbers start looking up, it, the convergence will happen even in that number. It's not just the percentile convergence. It probably is, I'm, I'm again, in, in three years down the line, probably a 695 and a, in the new version and the 720 in the old version might be the same, same person. It might even be higher, right? You're absolutely right. I think that's what is likely to happen, right? Again, we are talking about likely scenarios. Only time will tell whether whatever we are making a guess right now is right or wrong. Right. So don't put a gun to my head in two years, Donald, and you said this. No, I didn't say that. I'm saying it's likely to happen. Uh, Zubaita, which is easier, present GMAT or the GMAT focus edition? Uh, it, it purely is a function of a few things. Right. If sentence correction is a pain point for you, geometry is a pain point for you. And there are some of us who also have a writing block. We're happy basically solving a question and marking something. When there are five answer options, we're able to come to the answers much better. But as someone, I think money or someone pointed out a little while earlier that uh, that gentleman did not have a great AWS score. So if these are all pain points for you, I would say stay away from the old edition. Right? It is probably better to take the GMAT focus edition, have a good score in it and apply in round two than struggling with these things when it comes to the old edition. If I will even probably go to the extent of saying, if you don't even have to have all three of these as pain points, you might write very well, but your sentence correction might be a Achilles heel for you. You might be very good at geometry. Even in that case, why do you want to struggle with something that you're not good at? I think one gentleman, I think Abhinav or someone said, my grammar is poor, so should I wait for the GMAT focus edition? Something, one, even one part of it, of the three that they're removing is a pain point for you. Wait it out, wait it out. Right? Uh, again, this is a uh, common thing that I always fall back on. Quite often, it really doesn't matter when you get into a business school, but which business school you get into probably will make a bigger difference to where your career can head into. So for example, if you're taking the GMAT focus edition and therefore you're not able to catch round one or even round two because things get delayed and you're applying a year down the line, it would be better with a good GMAT score and applying next year and getting into a better school than getting stuck with a meddling GMAT score and not so great business school on account of that, right? The one thing that you have as a control variable between now and applying to a business school is your GMAT score. Everything else is probably etched in stone. Your 10th, 12th graduation marks, you can't go and change. Post-graduation, if you have already done, you can't change that. The number of years of experience, the company that you work for, the roles that you have done, most of those things, you don't have a choice, right? The extracurriculars that you have or you do not have, you don't have much of a choice of changing. A few things that you can change is basically your narrative, the way you write your application essays and your GMAT score. And GMAT score basically is something which is, uh, it is probably one thing on which every test taker, every applicant is weighed on a uniform scale. Delhi University scoring versus Madras University scoring, we can have debate about which is easier, which is tougher. Someone will say BA economics, 70% in Delhi University is the same as 83% in Madras University or vice versa. I don't know which is tougher, right? The point is those are debatable things. But the Delhi University student who is applying to, let's say, a business school in the US, Canada, or ISB, or IIMs in India for the one-year program, and a person from Madras University who is planning to apply to this, these places, will both take the same GMAT, and they are measured on the same scale. So this is a metric that business schools give a lot more importance to, because all other things are relatively subjective in the sense, like, uh, there are arguments which can be basically waged on either side of it. So this is a case where it is a uniform metric for everyone. So GMAT is going to be an important component. Therefore, whatever gives you your best advantage, where you can showcase a high percentile, a good score in the GMAT, do it. If you think you're already good and sentence correction is actually one of your strong points, you do very well in geometry, you might as well take the old edition of the GMAT and get your score right away and keep it with you. Because in the verbal, let's say of the three things that are there, you have a reading difficulty. On an average, out of the 13, 14 sentence correction questions that are there, you get 11 to 12 of them right. But in reading comprehension, of the 11 to 12 that you see there, you manage to get only seven of them right. The GMAT focus edition is going to be one which is purely reading comprehension and critical reasoning. Your advantage is remote, right? The power play for you is like completely gone. 
So if sentence correction happens to be your power play, I would suggest you take the older edition. If sentence correction happens to be the place where like uh, you, you, you are struggling with spin on Chennai Super Kings, uh, Marina, uh, whatever, or Chepak Stadium, then I think you should stay away from it. Anything new, Abhiveni, new added, sorry, just scrolled a little too far. Just hold on, me, sorry. Anything new added in the GMAT, new GMAT syllabus, nothing that we are aware of. Uh, but before I say nothing has been added, I would like to wait for the uh, release of the official gate on the 6th of June. Once we are able to lay our hands on it, I can say it with a lot more conviction. This is what the GMAT OG says, and that's a good reliable source to know what is being tested. Right now, nothing that they have mentioned that is being added. So that is what I can say, right? Harish, when should I start preparing for the focus edition? Start right now, Harish. If you're planning for the focus edition, your preparation, nothing, you're going to not work on sentence correction. You're not going to work on geometry. You're not going to bother about writing AWASs. Beyond that, everything stays from the old edition to the focus edition. Taking the tests and other things, wait it out. Because if you're starting a preparation, you're not going to do your full length test right now. So start your preparation today. Focus edition is down in October, right? So we are in the month of May, June, July, August, September. Four months of preparation is definitely needed to take the test. So if you want to catch early round deadlines, uh, early test availability, and apply for round two of this year, you should start your preparation today, tomorrow types. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> when focus edition is going to be implemented, they've said quarter four of this calendar year is what they've said. So uh, that is going to be sometime in the month of October, we're expecting it to be in the month of October. Which exam is tough, the old one or the new one, right? Uh, and why? We've covered that Anjali uh, just finished it, so I think you would have got the answer for it. In focus edition, just like the standard edition, we need to choose five colleges right after giving the examination. You're absolutely right, Nirani, but they made life easier. They've actually, in this focus edition, it, it is as if they have spoken to test takers and college the different colleges and found out what were all the pain points that existed for them. And they have basically uh, relieved people of those pain points. In the present version that you're writing right now, you need to choose five schools for which you can send your scores free of cost. The $275 that you pay for the examination gave you, it's like the free lounge access in the airport kind of thing. They gave you five free score reports. But there had, a, had to be a catch to it. There was a star and the terms and conditions applied. The terms and conditions that applied for the old edition is that you selected those five schools in the computer in which you're going to take the test just before you wrote the examination, before you saw, saw what your score is, right? So you basically had to always play it safe here. You would go by what you're typically, this is what we advise our students. Look at your average mock scores for the last three mocks. If that ended up being a 720, I would say select colleges for which the median GMAT score, or not the median, the 80th percentile GMAT score happens to be around 700. So you're playing it safe. Even if your score goes down by 10 or 20 points, your score will be in the top 20 percentile for that school. So go ahead, select those five schools and take the examination. And voila, you look at the examination score, you have a 750. Now, because you have a 750, you would want to shoot for better schools. You probably may not apply to three of the five schools that you initially opted for, and you can't change them. You'll be applying to a bunch of new schools, just keeping two out of these five. So you have wasted three free scores in that sense, right? Each free, each additional score is going to cost you $35. So $105 is kind of lost. What GMAC is doing right now is that you write the examination because everything is an objective type. In focus edition, you're going to get your score completely on the day of the test. So that's called the unofficial score. You'll see what it is. And they're going to give you the official score report will be available for you to see on mba.com login anywhere from seven to 15 days is what they say. Usually it's available in three to four days itself many a times. So let's go by what they say, seven to 20 days. 48 hours from that time, your official score report is available, not from the time you finish the test. 48 hours from the time your official score report. So you took the test, let's say today, four to seven days from now, you're likely to see your official score report. They say seven to 20 days. Quite often it comes earlier than that. So you get four days windows to window to ruminate whether your score is good, bad, ugly. And then you can, during that window, check out which schools can I apply to. You can talk to your GMAT tutors, you can talk to your application mentors, anyone, and find out, hey, this is my score. Which schools can I apply to? 48 hours from that time, your official score is available on mba.com. You should select these five scores. So five scores free are available. They're available for you to make an informed decision. This, as the thing, it's, it's not as if, you now GMAT is not trying to see whether you're able to 
estimate your capability even before you took the examination. They're saying that make an informed decision. We are not going to make you double guess your competence, right? That's what the earlier one kind of said. Now it's becoming a lot friendlier. Right. Mother's Nest, till when can I write the current edition? They said that it's going to be available till the first uh, quarter. They didn't say quarter, the first part of 2024. So let's say January, February of 2024, at least it should be available. You'll, you'll be able to take the older version, right? Thanks, Gaurav. Uh, Brunalini, can we give standard GMAT examination after the introduction? Yes, uh, that's what Mother's Nest question was also. You should be able to take it in the early part of 2024 also. I think till at least Jan, Feb, they should be making it available. Rahul, I took Zako Hybrid due to personal problems, not able to, I have restarted. Can you just touch base with us, uh, with our support team? You have our number, we'll take it at that place. Right? Thanks, Rahul. James, can you? Uh, can you tell me how I have to arrange for my total MBA application for M7 or top 10 business schools, including GMAT application transcript consultancy? Uh, how much will I have to arrange for? In terms of money, how much you need to get through with this application process? Uh, the GMAT examination itself, uh, $275 is the application fee. Uh, preparation should anywhere, depending upon whether you go for recorded course, live online course, physical classroom course, one-on-one -on -one tutor. I'll give you the range. It should be anything from about 10,000 Indian rupees all the way up to a lack of Indian rupees because there are people who choose to go with one-on-one -on -one tutoring, private tutoring. They do cost a bit. So the GMAT preparation, keep that kind of number. Choose what works for you. Again, playing it extremely safe. I would say budget for two attempts of the GMAT because you would do in the first attempt, the people who got fantabulous scores in one attempt of GMAT, there are people who had, had to go for two attempts. So in fact, if you're budgeting for it, I would rather err on the safe of on the, on the side of basically uh, uh, providing for more than less. Right. So five fifty dollars for the GMAT is what we are saying. And then let's say you will want to send some additional score reports over and above these five. Typically, people apply anything from six to nine schools. So let's say another five score report to be sent. One seventy five two hundred dollars on that count. You need to take the language test, which if it is IELTS or TOEFL, give of the order of magnitude of sixteen to twenty thousand rupees is what you'll be spending. Right. So. 550 plus 200, 750 dollars for the GMAT examination. 750 dollars for GMAT examinations give or take 60,000 rupees at 80 rupees to a dollar. Find what GMAT preparation works for you. Add that component to it. The IELTS course sending and everything keep 30,000 rupees TOEFL IELTS. So add that number to it. Consultancy. That's where again you again choose. You can go with Indian consultants who will probably be able to complete applications for five schools for you, starting from as a number which is like around 100,000 Indian rupees, 1 lakh Indian rupees, to about 3 lakh Indian rupees for five schools, Indian consultants. If you go for this uh, international consultants, people who graduated from Harvard and other things, the number is going to be a lot more, it would probably be upward of about five to $7,000 is what you'll have to be budgeting for it. So these are all the money that you're going to look at. So consultancy, I'll take a 2 lakh number. 2 lakh number for consultancy, about 60,000 for GMAT, 30,000 for IELTS. And what you need for your preparation component and application fee about $200 for about eight schools. That's about $1,600. That would again set you back by about 1.3 lakhs. So this is the kind of number that you need to be looking at. GRE or GMAT focus edition, which one to go with? Uh, my suggestion is take a diagnostic test for both, right? GRE diagnostic test, if you find that, see GRE quant is, a shade easier than what you would see the, as the GMAT quant. Jerry verbal, reading comprehension is on uh, more or less the same between the two. The question types and other things are a little different. The passage could be a little different between the two, but reading comprehension at the broadest level are basically one and the same in both. There's a lot of vocabulary importance in the GRE. If you're someone who likes words, you've been doing crosswords, you've been doing like jumbles and words, and you, you love to use those flossy, nasty, niggly filification, though GRE never tests that, right? So if you're someone who loves words per se, you might be an advantage with GRE. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Again, let's not go by our hunches and feelings. Take a diagnostic, see what you get there. Take a diagnostic for GMAT focus edition. Once you've done that, you'll also get one sense of what is likely to work for you. Back yourself and prepare for it. Uh, James, I've answered your question. Gokul Dip Prithviraj, if I prepare for focus edition, can I still write the current edition? What should I do differently? 
you prepare for the focus edition you need to add to that sentence correction geometry and awa to prepare for the world edition right i would say do it the other way prepare for the world edition you can shave off things and write the focus edition right that's how it basically works focus edition has fewer things to prepare said baskar sir thanks again for all the answers thanks manalini thank you uh james have answered your question i think it took me a while to come there so i guess all of those are answered sure rahul sure should i wait and take the new gmat by the uh the i kind of i think we answered this if sentence correction and geometry are strong points take the whole edition because you have an advantage there if sentence correction and geometry are not your strong points wait it out and take the gmat focus edition if you take the pro right now uh the pro would be valid for four months our focus edition course is going to be live only by end of august so by then this would probably be in the last one month of it so you would get access only to the older version you'll get only for a month in access to the newer tests and everything so if you're planning on the focus edition probably would want to wait for another month before you take it up right that note thank you so much thank you so much guys a lot of questions thing is uh irrespective of whether you're going for the focus edition or this if you're planning to apply for a 2024 mba mba starting in 2024 i don't think you can afford to miss waste any more time if you think that you're more likely to be taking the focus edition keep sentence correction geometry out of the picture for the time being and prepare for the rest if at some point in time you realize that hey i've done everything of this ir is a little shaky for me i don't want to struggle with data insights i would rather do preparation for sentence correction and geometry and go with the older edition you could make that addition to your entire preparation later on right first three months let's say uh, june july august prepare for whatever is there in the focus edition at that point you realize data insights is basically bugging me i'm not able to make as much headway as i would want to then in that case ir is an external component to the old edition prepare for one more month for gre uh, for for ge- geometry and sentence correction and write the old edition and get your score with gre as an external uh, with i don't know i'm yeah, with ir as an external component but if you prepare this well and by august end you realize that you are doing well in all three parts di verbal and the quant then basically wait out till october and take the focus edition right any case starting your preparation right now is the most meaningful thing to do if you want to join an mba in 2024 right how and when to register gokul's question the registration is beginning on the 29th of august for the focus edition at that point in time we'll know when the earliest of the uh, dates for writing the examination are available both for online and the center based version right so you have about 2 3 months in hand to start the registration process right best wishes guys do very well till we meet in the next edition of this q and a thank you